again. So you still haven't overcome your love of alcohol. The old physician let out a sigh as he removed the stethoscope. Two elderly men could be seen in the dimly lit study, which was filled with dust and a sickly sweet stench. In the corner of this room, which was much larger than what most people would call a study, was an expensive-looking bed, a man undergoing a medical examination, and the physician conducting it. There was also what appeared to be a servant watching over the whole scene. The bottle is my friend. It is no less of a friend than you, and it has stood by my side even longer than you have. As the man bearing his chest for the stethoscope rearranged his clothes, he spoke unapologetically. Kenzo san, your body only appears to be well thanks to the effects of the medicine. However, if you continue to drink such strong spirits, the treatment will become meaningless. Trust my judgment. Refrain from drinking. I thank you, though only for the sentence. My friend, Genji, another glass, water it down slightly, that way Nodjo can save face. Are you quite sure? After eyeing both the master who demanded the alcohol and the family doctor who forbade it, Genji, the old butler, silently gave a slight nod and carried out his master's orders faithfully. The family doctor, Nanjo, let out a deep sigh once again as he watched the butler busy himself alongside the liquor cabinet. There was a smell filling up the room. This sweet, poisonous aroma felt as though it melted the heart, if not the soul itself. It was the smell of that venomous green drink that the man couldn't bear to part with. Nanjo, you are my close friend. And we have known each other for quite a long time. I am deeply grateful for all that you have done to keep me alive this long. I have done nothing. After all, you never listen to my advice as your physician. <laughs> and you never listen when I warn you about mistaken chess moves you're about to make. It seems only fair, does it not? Master. Thank you. I wouldn't die if I ran out of your medicine. But I would if I ran out of this. Disregarding Nanjo, who had his face set in a resigned expression, Kinzo took the glass that Genji was holding out to him. Very few people would associate that venomous color with an alcoholic beverage. Nanjo. Be honest with me. How much time do I have left? Well now, how short must I make it to convince you to set the bottle aside? Nanjo once again let out a sigh of resignation. Then, he finally spoke to Kinzo as the latter swirled his glass. You don't have long. What precisely do you mean by that? Let us illustrate it with the chess game here. You have very nearly achieved checkmate, but you have not yet cornered my king. Nanjo's gaze was directed at a side table with a massive chess set placed on top of it. Judging by the positioning of the pieces, the game seemed to be entering its final stage. Black's rook and bishop were cutting deeply into enemy lines. White's king had already been castled and cornered, so that even an amateur could see that the match would reach its conclusion before too long. Every time Nanjo came to give a medical examination, both of them would make a few moves. Nanjo was hinting that Kinzo would most likely fall into his eternal sleep before this game could be concluded. These were less the words of a physician than they were the words of an old friend. Or you a normal patient, I would recommend that you write a will at this point. And what is a will, Nanjo? Handwritten instructions to the vultures on how to devour and scatter my corpse? No, 
not at all. As the words suggest, it is a way for you to record your will for a later generation. It is far more than just a means to divide up your inheritance. Huh. And apart from the diversion of the inheritance, what might I write off? You might write of your regrets, or matters you have left unfinished, things you want to pass down to others, or merely matters you wish to communicate. Anything you want. Hmm. <laughs> things I want to pass down to others are matters I wish to communicate? Ridiculous. I, Ushiro Miyakinzo, have not one thing to tell or leave behind. I was born with nothing. I will die with nothing. There is nothing I wish to leave to my foolish children. Even if the end were to come today, even if it were to come right now, I would accept that fate of death without a trace of fear. Jinzo san. I created everything. My fortune. My prestige. Everything. Those were built up by me. And they will be lost along with me. There is nothing I wish to leave behind. Nothing. After I'm gone. I care not if it all goes to waste. I desire no tomb, no coffin! Those were the terms of the contract I made with the witch. When I die, everything will be lost. That has been the promise since the beginning, and that's why nothing will be left behind. There is nothing I can leave behind! After reaching a furious crescendo, Kinzo suddenly slumped over. His expression was limp and feeble, as though an evil spirit had possessed him and then left. <sighs> However, I do have one regret. I have nothing to leave behind. But there is one thing I cannot leave undone. You would do well to write it down. Of course, it would be best if you could finish it before your time comes. However, even if the worst happens, those who come after you will carry it to completion. You must leave behind your regrets so that they can be resolved, even if you are unable to do so yourself. That is the purpose of a will. When Nanjo tried to gently pat Kinzo's shoulder, the dying man flew into a sudden rage and batted away Nanjo's hand. It's useless! 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 It must be done while I still live! At the moment of my death, my soul will be devoured by the demons of the contract and wiped out of existence! For me, there will be no peace or another world after death! That's why everything must be completed before I go! That's why a will has no meaning for me! And even if I had a chance to write such a thing, if I did have such a chance, I'd want to see it. I want to see it one more time. I want to see it be at the smile one last time. Oh, Beatrice, why have you resisted me for so long? I'll return everything you have given me. I prepared to lose everything. So please, show me your smile just one more time. Beatrice, I beg of you! You must be able to hear my pleas. That's the kind of woman you are! I beg of you! Show yourself to me! You're here, aren't you? You're standing there, invisible! Listening to every word I say. And even now you're mocking me from somewhere in this room. Aren't you? Please appear before me one more and smile. 
Feel free to scold me and even snatch away my life with your own hands, if you so desire. I don't want to die alone like this. I cannot let myself die until I see your smile one more time. <laughs> Beatrice, Beatrice. I offer this life of mine. I offer it all to you. I'm begging you. Beatrice! Things sure move with the times. I can't believe we'll be able to make the trip in just 20 minutes. I couldn't help but scratch my head and marvel at how far things have come in recent years. We used to go by boat. Back then, we were all forced to endure nearly half a day of swaying back and forth over the sea before we reached Nijima. Things have gotten so much more convenient these days. Still, I've never been on a plane this small. I've flown in a huge jumbo jet before, but this will be my first experience in such a tiny one. It's gonna shake, isn't it? They say smaller boats shake more than big ones, so I guess the same rule probably applies to planes. Uh, just spare me. <laughs> Don't worry, Battler Coon. It shakes much less than that boat did. Is that you? George Anarchy? <laughs> Don't scare me like that. You just shaved three years off my life. Anyway, what's shaking got to do with anything? <laughs> you don't think I'm actually scared of the plane shaking or maybe falling out of the sky or something, right? Oh, of course not. My mistake. I see you've changed a lot since we last saw you. After all, it's been six years since then. You're not a kid anymore. <laughs> Jeez, and here you are, old enough to smoke and drink. I've got no interest in smoking, but I've always wanted to try some booze. <laughs> Well, if you've got your dad's genes, I bet you can hold your own when it comes to drinking, right? Well, uh, I usually drink for business rather than pleasure. It's pretty hard to do business in Japan without it. <laughs> That's exactly right. That's why I never miss a chance to get in some practice. Oh, that's no good, Battler Coon. You're still a minor. 
Don't you know alcohol can stunt the growth of... Uh... Never mind. Come on! I'm tall enough already! In fact, it'd be easier to find clothes if I shrunk a little. I puffed my chest out proudly. Until I hit my growth spurt, my height was below average in my class. But then, I grew, and grew, and before I knew it, I'd passed 180 centimeters. I guess I have all that muscle training and those shady mail order performance enhancing drugs to thank for that. Before then, I never dreamed that I'd shoot 10 centimeters above George Anarchy, who'd reached his peak height early on. Damn. I'll bet my relatives all say, Look how big you've grown, Battle of John! Or something. That's also embarrassing. I wish they'd just give me a break. Anyway, my name, Battler. Well, it's pretty damn weird, don't you think? I've gotta wonder what my parents were thinking when they named me that. I've never met anyone who could read it right the first time. I usually get called Sentokun. Sorry, but that's not even close. My name is written like this. Can you read it? The first part is my family name, Ushiromiya. That's a fairly plausible Japanese pronunciation so far. The problem is my given name. It's made up of the characteristics for fight and person, and it's pronounced Battler. Put it all together, and you've got Ushiromiya Battler. Pretty crazy, right? It's crazy enough that my parents decided to call me that. It's even more crazy that some government worker let them make it official. Both groups are at the top of my must-kill list. Anyway, this is one of my cousins. His name is this. Pronounced Ushiromiya George. He's five years older than me, so he must be turning 23 this year. Since the Ushiromiya cousins consist of two boys and two girls, I ended up playing with George all the time. And because I've always thought of him as a big brother, I still call him Anaki today. Whoa! Battler Coon! Look how big you've gotten! You know what they say, leave a boy for three days and you hardly recognize him. It must be in his blood. Rudolph wasn't that tall either until his high school years. Perhaps people end up taller if their growth spurt comes late. Nah, it's nothing special. A real man needs to be tough on the inside, too. Exactly! Belrukun here knows how it works. Real men win or lose based on what they got on the inside. Can't ever forget to keep up your training and discipline. You gotta do that, wait very alertly for the perfect moment, and strike! Now, I never even imagined that I'd become the company president I am today, master of my own domain. Yep, to think I've come this far after starting up penniless and ruined. This stout, blunt old guy is George Anaki's dad, Uncle Hideyoshi. He's the husband of dad's older sister. In other words, we're not blood-related. He's nice to children, sociable all the time, and even quick to give out some spending money to us kids. Simply put, he's an awesome uncle. He speaks in an odd and very noticeable Kansai dialect, but he's actually a natural-born Kanto man. Apparently, impressions are everything in the business world. So, speaking in a different style than other people is an act that makes him stick out more. However, I hear he gets embarrassed when talking with an earshot of a real Kansai person, so he switches back to standard Japanese. I don't really get it, but he's definitely an interesting person. If only you weren't so quick to brag about your life story. That's enough for now, I think. I'm sure Battler's getting tired of it. Aren't you? Nope, not at all. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I think it's pretty cool for a man to have some stories he can brag about. 
I don't have anything like that at all. Oh, really? I'd imagine a man with your looks would leave girls crying left and right. I can't believe you have nothing at all to brag about. No, 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 no. You're joking, right? Of course nothing weirds like that ever happened to me. In fact, if you know anyone, I'm all ears. Come on, you aren't fooling anyone. <laughs> you must tell your aunt all about it later. After all, nothing of the sort ever happens to George. <laughs> this is George Anarchy's mother, Aunt Eva. She's my dad's older sister. She and Uncle Hideyoshi are a pair of jokers. They've always teased me, back as far as I can remember. This sometimes made them a bit hard to get along with when I was small. Well, I guess the events of the last 30 seconds prove that they can still be hard to get along with. And even so, George Anarchy's family is interesting and fun, and they seem to get along just fine. Sheesh, that's pretty much the total opposite of my family. Bad Larkoon, have you seen Rudolph san Huh? He headed off to the bathroom a while ago. Is he not back yet? <laughs> Maybe the poor geezer dropped dead. Num num num. <sighs> That's no way to talk about your own father. Still, this isn't the first time he's taken so long in the bathroom. Yeah, the guy's always been that way. Does he really have to take a magazine with him every time he needs to take a dump? And what on earth is he doing in there with those particular magazines? <laughs> oh, you don't need to worry about that at all. Since we've been together, I haven't let him do that on his own. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have to get the juicy details later. Sounds like Dad's got his balls in an iron grip! You know exactly what would happen with that man if I didn't keep a tight grip, don't you? No kidding. You're the only one capable of reining in that old bastard. As his son, I'm more than happy to let you take over. Yes, leave it all to me. After all, that's my specialty. This woman is my father's wife. Her name is Ushuomiya Kyrie. As you can probably tell from our conversation, she's not my real mother. She's basically my stepmother. My real mom died six years ago. Kyrie-san is the woman Dad married afterwards. It's understandable for someone my age. I can never bring myself to call his new wife Mom. And I doubt she feels like using the word son on this massive kid who's no relation to her at all. We aren't little kids. We know there's nothing to be gained by fighting. So, we decided that we wouldn't force ourselves to pretend that we were a family. I've decided to act a bit more frank with her, acting as though she's a friendly neighbor instead. It's much easier if we just keep a little distance. Instead of forcing ourselves to act all close and making each other uncomfortable. Kyrie-san has always been very open about all this, and thanks to that, we've been able to get along pretty well. Then, just when we were bad-mouthing Dad about being in the bathroom, the man himself came back, wiping his hands with a handkerchief. Hmm. Bachelor. Hey, what's up, Dad? Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't pinch my ear! Arr. So, you've been talking trash about me with Mom again, haven't you? What makes it so hard to show a little respect for your father? Whoa, 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 whoa. Damn it, that hurts! You can stretch my ear all you want, but I'm not going to be able to fly. That hurts. Come on now. Oh. 
up, down, down, left, right, left, right. Now, say, Father, please forgive me for being so rude. Like hell I will. Go find yourself some members-only store if you want it that much. Ah, let go! This old bastard is my dad. I think I'm pretty tall myself, but dad's just about as tall as I am. It's no surprise Aunt Ava started talking about dad's blood when she saw my height. By the way, my height isn't the only thing I got from him. Seems having weird names runs in the family. Dad's full name is written like this. You can't read it, can you? Come on, it's just this. Anyway, this guy's name is pronounced Rudolph. <laughs> he must hate Grandfather for giving him that name. Still, there's no reason to pass that weird naming tradition onto me. As the old bastard twisted my ear all over the place, Aunt Eva snuck up behind him and grabbed his ear. Hey, Rudolph. You should know better than to physically abuse your son. Yeah, that hurts, Aneki. This scene perfectly illustrated the relationship between the prankster younger brother and the older sister who could deal out punishment to him despite his size. I think that's good enough for now, Ivanesan. I'll make sure to stretch out his other ear later on. Oh, my apologies. I must leave some pulling for you to do, Kiryu-san. Rudolph, make sure Kiryu-san gives you lots and lots of punishment later on, okay? You're one to talk, Aneki, abusing your little brother like that. Hideyoshi Nisan, I'd like to thank you very much for picking her up. If you hadn't been so generous, she'd still be unsold in the store. You have my gratitude and apologies. What? Who are you calling unsold? After taking two, three steps back, Aunt Eva unleashed one of her beautiful high reverse roundhouse kicks, which stopped just a centimeter away from the tip of Dad's nose. After starting out with Tai Chi Chuan for her figure, Aunt Eva then developed an interest in the Chinese martial arts. After that, she went through karate, taekwondo, capoeira, and... What is it she's learning now again? Well, anyway, they say a woman's weapons are in her lower body. And that's literally true for Eva. Rudolph? Did you know that a single direct blow to the side of the head like that would knock you unconscious? Not so long ago, I accidentally connected in a practice match and my opponent was out cold. Sheesh, what a pain. I'm so sorry, she can't help walking like a freak. Dad, completely unfaced, shrugged and smiled ironically at Uncle Hideyoshi. <laughs> Never had a brother or sister myself. So, when I see you two bickering with each other, it makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Sure is nice to have a big family. Oh, then why not consider making a little brother for George Kuhn? He's already a fine adult who's about to go off on his own, so it might be a good time to have another child. Hey, have a little sympathy for the new kid, and all the pain and suffering he'd have to live through. I'm surprised even George Kuhn turned out as well as he did after being born from this sinister sister of mine. And what an awesome kid he is. Please share some of that with our blockhead of a son someday, will you? That's not at all how it happened. It's thanks to Ava Nissan's proper rearing that George Kuhn became the kind, gentle kid he is now. Isn't that right, Nissan? Oh, come now. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> our George still has a long way to go. By the way, how's your little Anja chan doing? I heard she was vomiting. Oh, that's right! 
And I was hoping to finally see your face after such a long time. Is she okay? She often catches a cold when the seasons change. She's very frail. I did want to bring her along, but we decided to have my family look after her this time. I think that's a wise move. She'll heal a lot better if she stays away from that venomous head family household. A child's health is always more important than an adult's convenience, don't you think? I know some green medicines for vomiting colds like that. When we get back home, I'll send some to you right away, so please let her try some. Thank you very much, Hideyoshi Nisan. I'm always in your debt. And once the conversation veered off in that direction, we kids didn't have any chance of butting in. For now, I'm just glad Oniva gave Dad his just desserts for tugging on my ear. Are we still waiting for the weather report? George Anarchy pointed at the counter. The checking weather sign was still stuck next to the departure times for the flight we were scheduled to board. According to Anarchy, smaller planes are more subject to winds and other effects of the weather. And it's not at all uncommon for flights to be delayed because of that. Wait a sec. We are totally sure it's not gonna shake, right? From down here on the ground, it just looks cloudy, not windy. Well, I guess it's different up where the planes fly. The weather is a bit uncertain today. Aunt Ava looked at a TV in the lounge. The weather forecast was being broadcast, informing us that a typhoon was approaching the Kanto region. A typhoon again. Guess there's no helping it with the annual family conference being held in October. Couldn't he have chosen a better season? I agree. I've always hoped we could have it sometime around the Obun Festival in mid-August. In that case, why don't you suggest that to Father and Nissan during the conference? Very funny. Why don't you do it yourself? Our brother would never listen to anything I suggested. No way. It doesn't really bother me that much to have it in October. I was just saying, you might want to propose it. Since you said you hate typhoons so much. I only said that typhoons always come around this time of year. You're the one who said you wanted to move it to the Ovon Festival, right? Oh, you said it too last year. Didn't you say that it would be easier to fit into your schedule if we had it during the Obon Festival? I never said anything like that. Oh, yes, you did. I certainly wouldn't forget something like that. No, I didn't. You're the one saying that all the time. Didn't you know? Stopping a kick just a hair's breadth away from impact is a very high-level technique. Sheesh! Women your age shouldn't spread their legs like that! Pat and Aunt Eva's argument looked no different from a couple of brats quarreling. Uh, even though they usually behave like normal parents, they turn right back into kids again when they meet their siblings at these family conferences. You're the one who looks like a real adult, analyzing it all calmly. I hope I never turn out like that, old bastard. I'd much rather end up as an intellectual adult like you, Anarchy. Like me? Oh, I still have a long way to go. I still have very little experience out there in the real world, and I need to work on becoming more confident and sociable. I think you far surpassed me on all of those counts, Battler Coon. I'm sure you'll outstrip me fast enough when you become an adult. George Anarchy scratched his head and laughed, as though trying to hide his embarrassment. Of course, he was just being humble. Anarchy entered a university and became an apprentice at Uncle Hideyoshi's company at the same time, studying both academics and how to become a business emperor in parallel. Then right after graduating, he got into Uncle Hideyoshi's company as his father's aide piling up a lot of real-life experience as he devoted himself zealously to his work. 
His great dream is to one day stand on his own and build up his own kingdom. Nanaki is a real paragon of a man, sparing no effort as he strives towards his goal. It's no exaggeration to say that I really respect him. And then there's me. I'm nothing at all like Anaki. I'm living my happy-go-lucky idle high school life to the max. I've got no dreams for the future! I'd like to just sit back, stay cool, and let the money flow in. But of course that could never happen. Anaki was my age. He had already formed an impressive objective and had started devoting himself towards studying for that goal. So, I guess I can't compare at all. My dad just says, Sure, you can study at my company if you like cleaning toilets. Damn it. I'm not gonna be in the debt of that old bastard. I'll find my way myself. If only willpower was all it took to become an adult. Should I go on one of those self-searching journeys that are all the rage these days? Well, it's not like I can mooch off my parents for that kind of money. Hmm? Oh! Right then, Uncle Hideyoshi shouted out loudly. He's a really nice person on the whole, but he does have a problem controlling the volume of his voice. When I looked over, I saw that he was greeting Aunt Rosa, who had come late. Ho ho! If it isn't Rosa-san! My chan Long time no see! <laughs> Long time no see! <sighs> Maria, shouldn't that be it's good to see you again? Greet your uncle properly. <sighs> it's good to see you again. There you go. Well said. How about some candy as a reward? Oh, ah, where'd I put it? Rosa-san, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Maria-chan. It's been too long, Kiryane-san, Hideyoshi-mi-san. And, oh my, battler -kun? Look how big you've gotten! Ugh, come on. <laughs> it's embarrassing hearing that from every person I meet. Hey, Rosa. You're late. If the plane was on time, you'd barely have made it. I'm sorry. We had some trouble making our train connection. So, are we waiting on the weather again? <laughs> Don't complain. I much prefer the 30-minute plane trip to spending six hours bouncing about on a boat. Even if we're kept waiting here for an hour, it's still much faster overall. Mario has got a new too! So, how tall are you now? Maria-chan parroted Uncle Hideyoshi's question, looking up at her mother. I guess she doesn't remember her own height. She's probably right in the middle of a growth spur, so her height must change every month. Give it a few more years and she'll suddenly start looking feminine. Um, just how tall were you the last time you got measured? You just keep getting bigger and bigger, don't you? Right? I think she's grown a lot since last year. Let's see. She turned nine years old this year, didn't she? Nine years old! Ooh. That's right! You're nine years old now! Glad to see you're doing well too, Maria-chan! Up you go! Ooh. <laughs> I guess you've gotten a bit too heavy to play airplane with. <laughs> George Anarchy. What a rude thing to say to a lady. Here, I'll do it. Up you go! Uh, uh... 
when I went to lift her up in Anarchy's place. Maria stiffened defensively, staring suspiciously at my face. <sighs> That's right. Last time I met Maria, it was six years ago. She was only three years old. Of course she doesn't remember my face. Maria-chan, don't you remember? It's Battler Coon. You used to play together, remember? No surprise, I guess. The last time she met Battler, she was only three. You don't keep memories at that age. She must know everyone's face apart from mine because she meets them every year. But I haven't had contact with the Ushiromiya family for about six years now. So it's no surprise that this nine-year-old girl doesn't have any memories of me. Even I can only just barely remember her being a three-year-old crybaby. Maria, this is Battler Onichan, Rudolph Nissan's son. Understand? The brother's son is... The, the brother is the son... Huh? Huh? Ah! That... Sound was probably her brain going so overload at that complicated explanation. I guess the phrasing of that was confusing. Me or Oni, the title you'd use to refer to an actual older brother, can also be a friendly honorific for a boy who's only a bit older than you. It's just like me or Oni, the word for big sister. Maria chan, this is Batlu. He's your cousin, like me. George Onichan? Battler? Cousin? Aww. That's right. You got it. This part of Anarchy is what makes me really look up to him. For someone who isn't married, he's just great at dealing with kids. I'm sure he'll be an indulgent father in the future. Battler Onichan? Maria looked straight at me with a questioning expression, as if asking whether it was okay to call me that. <laughs> yup, that's me, Battler. Nice to meet you, Maria. <sighs> Battler! Maria, you mustn't talk to him like that. Call him Battler Onichan. <laughs> that's alright, Aunt Rosa. I don't sweat the small stuff. Hey, Maria! We're close enough that we don't need honorifics, right? Battler, Battler, Battler! Ooh, ooh. That's right! Maria, Maria, Maria! We horsed around for a while to make up for the six year gap in our friendship. She probably still thinks of me as nothing more than a big new friend. But things will probably work out as we get to know each other again. But I'm surprised. She's just the way I remember her being six years ago. Seems that people just don't change that much after all. I'm a bit happy that she's still the pure, innocent girl I remember. Her name is written like this. Of course. This is pronounced Maria. The third character looks like a cross, which is pretty cool. The feelings don't usually show up on her face, so it can be difficult to know just what she's thinking. But that's just how she looks on the outside. On the inside, she's just a sweet, normal girl. And there's Maria's mother, Aunt Rosa. She's my dad's younger sister. Rosa is written like this. Here's a name that's totally not Japanese. Sorry to say it, but her name's almost as ridiculous as Dad's. I've got to respect her for not ending up as screwed up as he is. When I think about it, all the names in my family sound foreign. Just why is Grandfather so upset with that? Because of him, 
Even we grandchildren have to put up with this weird naming sense. It's even more annoying since grandfather's own name is totally normal. There's one thing about Aunt Rosa that's a relief compared to the other family members. The old bastard and Aunt Eva have this annoying urge to tease and mock people all the time. But even though she shares their blood, Aunt Rosa isn't like that at all. She has the most common sense among all the siblings. Like Uncle Hideyoshi, she's a kind aunt who will always be on the kid's side. However, possibly because she's more strict as a parent, she's not liberal with handing out spending money like Uncle Hideyoshi. Okay. Now we have the entire group of family members who are going to board the plane. At that moment, as if it had waited for us all to arrive, an announcement rang out through the lobby. Our apologies for the delay. Boarding will now commence for flight 201 to Nijima. We ask that passengers please form two lines in the front of the counter behind the white line. Rosa, you still haven't gone through boarding procedures, right? Hurry up. Oh no! Maria, come on! We had to go through a metal detector before going out on the runway. Now, our small plane wasn't as massive as an international flight, but it was still a plane. A staff member holding a metal detector checked us all. And once all of us cleared the check, we followed the staff member out onto the runway. Come to think of it, everyone here is in the Ushiromiya family. It's like this is a reserved charter flight or something. Our group stopped in front of the entrance to the airplane. Then, our guy turned around and spoke, looking down at the passenger list as he did. Boarding will now commence. As I call out the names on the passenger list, please take your seats in order, starting from the front row on the right side and going right to left, then onto the next row. I will now begin reading the passenger list. Ushuru Mia Hideyoshi-sama. Oh, I'm first. Right here. Far away. Do you have some candy, Ava? I've been looking all over for some, but I can't find any. Ushuru Mia Ava-sama. They're in my handbag. I'll get one once we're inside the plane. I heard that candies are a good way to protect your ears from hurting because of variations in atmospheric pressure when landing or taking off. That's probably what they're talking about. I hope I get a window seat. <laughs> Don't worry. There aren't any other kinds of seats. As George Haneke said, there were apparently only two lines of seats. So, this is what a small plane is like. We are totally sure it's not gonna shake, right? Ushirumiya George Sama! Right here. Don't worry, Battler Coon. It won't shake too much. Ushirumiya Battler Sama! Uh, Anaki, what do you mean, not too much? You can just swim if you fall from a boat, but if a plane crashes, you're screwed, right? We all get our own parachutes in our seats, don't we? Wait, we don't? You sure me a Rudolph-sama? Come on, Battler. Stop standing there slack-jawed and get in. Ah, oh, Dad! Don't push me! We don't get parachutes! Okay, you two. Stop fooling around. Let's move on in. Oh, Kyrie! Don't push me! This blockhead isn't moving! Ushirumiya Maria Sama! Let's move on in! Ushirumiya Rosa Sama! Maria! Be quiet! 
This is your pilot, Kawabata. We'd like to thank you for taking New Tokyo Aviation's Flight 201 today. We estimate that the flight to Nijima Airport will take about 20 minutes. We are receiving reports of atmospheric turbulence. There may be some shaking of the aircraft, so we ask that you do not unfaster new seatbelts after takeoff. Uh, Anaki, did that guy just say we needed to wear seatbelts? In a jumbo jet, they let you undo them after takeoff, right? So it's gonna shake so much we can't take them off? Damn it, you tricked me. It is gonna shake after all. Where are the parachutes? I knew I should have taken the bow! 